This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Question Willis. This is question five from the December 2010 P7 examination. Let's see what's required. Critically appraise the draft audit report prepared by Audit Senior, but were not required to redraft it. Identify and explain any other matters to be considered and the actions to be taken by the auditor in respect of management imposed limitation on scope. So let's uh, have a look at what's gone on in here. Manager responsible for the audit of Willis, a large client of our audit firm uh, operating the pharmaceutical industry. The audit work for the year to August 2010 nearly complete and we're reviewing the draft audit report which has been prepared by an audit senior. We're aware that Willis uh, is developing a new drug and has incurred significant uh, research and development costs during the year, most of which has been capitalized as an intangible asset. The asset is recognized at 4.4 million the total assets recognized in the draft statement of financial position is 55 million. And Willis uh, has a draft profit and loss account, uh, had a draft, draft profit uh, before tax of 3.1 million. Uh, and again, like a, a previous question in this uh, exam, uh, we're given this information here uh, so we can get some feel for materiality. So we have the uh, total assets uh, here of uh, 55 million. Uh, in terms of total assets, we're looking to one, uh, one to two percent. So one percent of that is about 0.55, and we're going up to about uh, 1.1. Okay, and the assets in there recognise this 4.4, so it certainly looks uh, material. Draft profit. Uh, draft profit, we're looking 5 to 10%. Uh, so 10% is 0 0.31. Uh, and the 0.5% uh, is going to be about 0 0.155. Yeah. And again, this 4.4 uh, million, uh, had it been written off instead of being uh, capitalized, would of course uh, it cut sways through the, the profit which is there. So this uh, uh, capitalization, this new drug, here and the decision to capitalize it is uh, very material indeed. So having <coughs> reviewed the audit working papers, we're aware that management has not allowed the audit team access to the results of the scientific tests and trials performed on the new drug being developed. Now basically the issue uh, here uh, is that if the company is going to be capitalizing development expenditure, uh, there are a number of tests uh, to complete before we can do that. Like, has the company got enough money to bring it to the market? Uh, is the product technically feasible? Is there going to be an income stream uh, arising from it? Can we separately uh, identify the expenditure? Uh, and really here, if we, we haven't been allowed to access the scientific tests, uh, we presumably have no idea uh, whether or not uh, capitalization is the proper treatment of this development expenditure. <clears throat> and really anticipating, uh, I suppose is anticipating uh, two here, uh, other matters to be considered and the actions to be taken, my goodness me, uh, we should really be thinking uh, here about management integrity. Management should know, and it should be part of the letter of engagement, and it's, a, it's one of the preconditions of an audit, uh, that management accepts that it should provide the auditors with all the explanations and documentation they require, uh, and here management is refusing to do it. So, again, anticipating too, it could be that this refusal is actually uh, undermining the preconditions for an audit, uh, and it certainly should be making us as auditors feel uneasy uh, about how straightforward and honest uh, management is. Anyway, getting back and looking at the uh, draft 
audit report to critically uh, appraise it. And the first thing uh, we can say, and, and actually when the, the, the uh, question was written, this wouldn't have been a problem, uh, but uh, uh, now the way the audit report, the paragraphs in very strict order, then it's in the wrong order. So the first thing we should say is really the opinion paragraph should come very close indeed uh, to the top of the audit report. Uh, basically all you say before that is we have audited the financial statements of ABC, the financial statements are this. Uh, and then it goes on to the opinion paragraph. Uh, uh, and here uh, we uh, have to stick with the strict ru rules, the strict wording. And the, the wording is not disclaimer on view given by the financial statements. It should be disclaimer of opinion. You know, it's not up to auditors to kind of extemporize, extemporize and make up a, a near meaningful phrase. This is very strict stuff. Uh, because this is what really the end result of the audit is showing to the members uh, and we have to stick with these rules. Let's go through that as if we're doing the right order. So that, that should be up above. It says, uh, because of the lack of evidence that we could gain over the intangible assets. So remember, this is being addressed to the members of the company uh, and will they know what an intangible asset is? Uh, and particularly the intangible asset. There may be you know, several included in the statement of financial position. It would be much more informative uh, to the members uh, if you said there is an intangible asset uh, which represents the capitalized development expenditure, expenditure on this new drug. Uh, uh, but we have, uh, as explained in the ba basis of opinion paragraph, uh, we have been unable to obtain evidence uh, that the capitalization of this uh, is in line with the appropriate accounting standards, something of that sort. It's also worth saying, and because and, uh, we're looking here at a, a change of opinion, uh, 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 because of disagreement, because we think uh, that the financial statements do not show a true and fair view uh, uh, here, uh, or we're thinking uh, because we don't have the right evidence. And here I think uh, we're saying it's because we don't have the right evidence. Now, it, it could be perfectly fair that the, it's okay to capitalize at 4.4, or it might be a load of rubbish, but it would be useful to people to, to point out down here that the amount at stake or being in doubt or argued about, whatever kind of way we want to kind of be thinking about it, is 4.4 million. Uh, so we could be saying, you know, at present there is 4.4 million capitalized in the statement of financial position. Uh, if it turns out it shouldn't have been capitalized, uh, then that would have to be removed from the statement of financial uh, uh, position and would have to be written off against profit, reducing the repro reported profits from, you know, X to Y. That's giving the whole story, if you like, uh, to the members of the, the company. It's saying uh, uh, here uh, that they are unable to form an opinion. It's a disclaimer of opinion. I've got at least the heading kind of right here, but it should say disclaimer of opinion. Uh, we have to think is whether a disclaimer of opinion is appropriate or whether it might be more useful uh, to, point, to talk about a, a, a qualification. So except for this amount, the financial statements do show a true and fair view. Uh, the profits are 3.1. If this is written off, it's 4.4. It is obviously uh, changing a profit into a loss, but it is a discrete amount. Uh, and there is potentially an argument for saying that maybe it should be handled by a qualification. Because the problem is, if you say we're unable to come to an opinion, uh, then you're really saying the whole financial statements are kind of not worth the paper they're written on. 
looking at the basis of opinion, this should say, remember the title should match, this should be coming after the opinion paragraph, it should now be entitled basis of qualified opinion or basis of disclaimer opinion, if that's what we stick with. As there is evidence available uh, to us in respect of the intangible asset, and again, I would, I would put this down to uh, and, and say in respect of the capitalization of the development expenditure of the new drug, was limited. Well, how was it limited? Uh, was limited because we were not uh, able to, or not allowed, I would say not allowed, uh, to inspect the scientific records. Uh, relating to the performance of this drug. Because that's that's really what the restrictions placed on us by management are. They wouldn't allow us to see that. So, so be straightforward about it. You know, be informative about it. As a result of this, we have been unable to verify the appropriateness of the amount capitalised. I think that's probably all right. And we are worried and are we worried, or are we terrified, or are we slightly concerned, or slightly anxious? It's a funny thing to say, and we are worried. Uh, uh, you'd be far more likely to say, and nobody cares if all of us are worried. Um, uh, uh, we really want to be saying here, uh, uh, and therefore we have no evidence about whether or not the asset should be uh, capitalised, or whether it has been overvalued and should in fact have been written off. Because of the significance of the item, that's okay, uh, and the lack of integrity shown by management. How odd. Uh, you would never say that in uh, an audit report. You've made it fairly clear that uh, management has been uh, obstructive uh, in not letting you see these reports. Uh, but, you know, there might have another reason for you not seeing these reports. And, you know, they might they might feel a highly confidential. Uh, uh, it's not justifying them, not showing the reports, but to say, therefore, it's a lack of integrity, implying that they're dishonest, is is, is a step too far. Uh, and it, it it's it's potentially even leading into a bit of a legal minefield uh, if they think of defamation of character there. So I would leave it as, you know, because of the significance of the item, we have been able to form uh, an opinion. It's not a view, it's an opinion all the way through on the financial statements as a whole. Other matters to be considered and actions to be taken by the auditor in respect of the management imposed uh, limitation on scope. Well, the first uh, thing is, is, is going to be fill this gap in our evidence in any other way. And probably here we, we can't. Uh, but, uh, you know, we could maybe go to the board minutes and the board minutes uh, uh, was casting some doubt on the scientific results. It's giving us some more information. If the board minutes were kind of celebrating the great breakthrough of this uh, drug, then it's giving us a little bit more information and, and so on. Uh, if we looked at budgets for next year and we saw revenue from this drug coming in, uh, then it, it looks as though they expect this to be selling and, and so on. Uh, and indeed, if they had begun selling it in the new year, uh, then presumably, and are selling well, then presumably uh, we could maybe conclude uh, that, in fact, the development expenditure probably could be capitalised. Although we'd still be a little bit unhappy about it because we'd be you're picking away at the, at the back of our brains is, you know, what is it in these scientific tests that management doesn't want us to see? What happens next year uh, if uh, you know, something kind of like it repeats again and management's got into the, the habit of not showing us information and then there's almost a, a potential of an intimidation threat you know, well, you didn't see it last year and you're happy to sign off the financial statements. Why are you making a fuss this year when you can't see something else that we want to keep secret? The other thing that you would normally do is is to complain. You could complain to the audit committee if there was one that, you know, management isn't playing ball, management isn't being cooperative. 
uh, uh, you know, could you prevail upon the main board uh, to enable us to have sight of these tests? And of course, you could go to the main board yourself. Uh, when you are drafting your uh, audit report, it is given to the board to approve. They can't censor it, but you're saying, look, I'm going to put this really heavy uh, uh, modified opinion into your financial statements and it's going to look really bad. Wouldn't you want to reconsider and let us see these sci the scientific tests where you know, it, it, it might show that your treatment of this amount was perfectly straightforward and perfectly legitimate. B. Responsible for the audit of Moore Company with the year ended 30th of September 2010. Uh, the following notes have been left for your attention by the uh, audit senior. Our audit testing performed so far on trade payable revealed some internal control deficiencies. Supplier statement reconciliations have not always been performed by the client. Invoice is not always approved. We found some errors in the payables ledger and the individual accounts of suppliers that make up the uh, payables balance, uh, the total of which is material to the financial statements. Recommend what further actions should be taken by the auditor and outline any reporting requirements in respect of the internal control deficiencies that have been identified. And the first thing is that uh, once you begin to find uh, uh, problems with the internal control system, uh, you can't rely on it as well. Uh, we found a few errors. Uh, we found a few instances of invoices, or it says uh, invoices not approved and so on. Uh, but in America, is it going to be 80% of them not approved? And uh, are uh, the, these errors going to be very common on the payables ledger? What we have to do is if you find that the controls aren't working, you have to do much more really substantive testing uh, because there's no other way that you're going to bring the audit risk down to an acceptable level otherwise by than by reducing your detection risk, which means doing more work. So it'll certainly be more detailed work on more and more of these accounts payables and and, 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 and so on. What else uh, do uh, we have to do? Of course, you'll you, you be doing your um, uh, uh, ratios and so on as, uh, as well to see uh, if the uh, level of the accounts payable seem to be uh, reasonable your um, um, but basically it's going to be delving into the invoices delving delving into the accounts uh, to, to try and locate the level of errors if you like uh, and to try to determine whether the level of error is actually going to be material uh, for the financial statements as a whole if it's just one or two uh, little blips uh, and it's obviously immaterial, uh, we might be happy with the financial statements not even being altered, although we probably asked them for them to be altered. If it was going to be looking material, uh, then we'd ask for the financial statements to be amended. Otherwise, we're going to be heading towards uh, a modified opinion uh, because the uh, payables balance uh, contains material uh, misstatements. And then uh, any reporting requirements in respect of the internal control deficiencies. Well, there's a normal, what's sometimes called management letter, uh, where you set out, out in three columns. Here's the problem with the internal control system, that your know, invoices aren't always being approved, that uh, statement reconciliations are not being performed. Uh, here's the potential results of that, uh, that we're going to be making purchases which have not been properly approved and therefore maybe wasting money, that we have no kind of external verification that the payables balances are right because we don't reconcile it to the uh, supplier statements, and here's how you fix it. So approve all the invoices and do regular 
uh, uh, reconciliations with the accounts payable statements. Then what we have to do is to think of these uh, discrepancies or problems or breakdowns in internal control during the current audit. Uh, we would uh, uh, think of reporting to an appropriate level all breakdowns of internal control. But then we have to think whether or not there's a significant breakdown in internal uh, control. And if it's a significant breakdown in internal uh, control, uh, one that could lead to the financial statements effectively being misstated, then we have to bring this to the attention of management and potentially the attention of those charged with governance. Because these are you know, serious flaws which can give rise to uh, serious material misstatements in the financial statements.